Thank you. Uh, thank you, Patricia. Um, thank you, Nigel, for your indefatigable efforts in convening this and indeed for all, for all that you uh, for all that you do. Uh, it's really an honour for me to, um, to address you here to speak today on behalf of the International Legal Forum. Um, I wanted to um, also uh, acknowledge and thank uh, our members of the European Parliament that are sitting here and particularly the fact that you come from across the political spectrum. And even though we are uh, we have differences, and you have differences, I'm sure, within uh, that we do come here united in uh, the pursuit and the battle against uh, radicalization, hate, and extremism. And that's, I think, an important and powerful symbol and message uh, to everyone in Europe and beyond. Um, I'm happy to see the presentation is up here. Um, I will try and make my uh, remarks uh, very brief. Um, with your indulgence, though, I will uh, get straight to, straight to the point. Terrorism wherever it occurs, whether it is Brussels, Madrid, Paris, or the streets of Jerusalem, for that matter, does not occur in a vacuum. It is a direct result of a pervasive discourse and infrastructure of incitement, hate, and radicalization, uh, instilling a worldview justifying the violence we see on our streets today. As Elie Wiesel famously said, we must take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. This is not a battle in which the EU can afford to remain silent. For when you stay silent, violence, hate and terrorism inevitably follow. If we can just turn to the, the, the second um, slide in the presentation. Um, to underscore the dangers, the very real dangers of this inaction in the face of uh, pervasive extremism and hate and incitement, I wanted to focus, like some of my uh, predecessors here, on the dangers of uh, the group called Samidun, the very one that stood outside this very parliament not more than a few months ago, calling for the destruction of both the State of Israel and the European Union. I won't go into too much detail about some of their background, uh, at least that which has been covered by my, uh, by my colleagues. Um, but I did want to start off by saying this. You can understand a lot about an organisation by the people who lead it. This group is led by a man by the name of Khaled Barakat. I wanted to start off, if you can please show the very, very short clip here with, uh, with audio and you can understand who this person is. It is working, yes? It's not. Sorry? Okay. Uh, okay. Khaled Barakat, I am a Palestinian uh, writer and I'm here to express the views of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. The Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. The Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. He continues in this interview by calling for armed struggle in order to liberate Palestine and dismantle the State of Israel. This is a man that even the PFLP itself has openly claimed to be one of their senior members. In 2019, Barakat was deported from Germany, an EU member state, following a Berlin appellate court decision, court decision finding that, and I quote, he repeatedly acted as an activist for the PFLP. In 2021, as we've already heard, Israel formally designated the group Samidun as a terrorist organization, specifically citing their links to PFLP, and yet again noting that Barakat is part of the leadership of PFLP abroad. He is even a regular on Iran's state press TV, uh, calling for violence and louding Iran's involvement in the region. Yet egregiously, this very parliament opened its doors to Barakat not, not less than a few years ago, to speak here. Barakat is not the only Samidun leader with terrorist ties. Mustafa Wad, Samidun's representative, is a Lebanese Belgian national based in Brussels. He too is a member of the PFLP, who was convicted in 2019 of receiving training by Hezbollah, the Iranian terrorist group, and wiring money on behalf of PFLP to Barakat here in Brussels from Lebanon and Syria on the instructions of PFLP. Another is 
Mohamed Khatib, who currently resides here in Brussels and serves as the European coordinator for Samidun. Like his colleague, Khatib too is also a member of PFLP. Can we pr uh, play this video very br briefly? And you can see this is an excerpt from the rally that was held outside the parliament in last October. Defeating Israel means defeating the US. Defeating Israel means defeating Canada. Defeating Israel means defeating this colonial institution. What he went on to say in Arabic, which was not translated in English or put on their web page, and he was very clear with his words. He said, by any means necessary, including, quote, bullets, Kalashnikovs, and rockets. Not words, not ideas, but bullets, Kalashnikov, and rockets. In December 2017, by the way, Samidun convened an event in Athens to celebrate, celebrate 50 years since the founding of the PFLP. During that event at which Khatib spoke, he said, and I quote, our enemies are not only in Tel Aviv and occupied Haifa, they are coming from and supported by Brussels, Paris and Berlin. And this is why we must struggle everywhere. You see, they do not differentiate between Israel, between the European Union. For them, we are one and the same. The one destructive thread that weaves all this hatred together and our shared values of democracy, freedom, human rights, sanctity of life is the Islamic Republic of Iran. You can see on this graphic above us the ties between Samidun and Iran. The question is how much longer can the European Union keep turning its back and allowing Samidun to operate unabated while Iran further spreads its tentacles of terror across this continent? We know that PFLP is a proxy of the Iranian regime, which provides a terror group with money, weapons, and logistic support. We know that Sami Dun, in turn, which is an offshoot of the PFLP, whose senior leaders are PFLP members and receive instructions and money from them, even has a chapter in Tehran. They do not hide this. On the contrary, they are proud of this. They've held events there in Tehran under the pretext of cultural activity but on the contrary, eliciting support for their activities here in Europe and beyond. We've said that Barakat is irregular on their television screens. We know that senior Samidun members like Mustafa Wad have been trained by Hezbollah and have received financial support from PFLP from Lebanon and Syria. This is the most direct financial link between Samidun and the Iranian regime. I repeat, this is a clear and direct link between the Iranian regime Samidun and the EU. Samidun has even expressed their support and admiration for Qasem Soleimani, the former head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, calling him a major military and political leader while advocating support for the Ayatollah Khamenei and the Iranian regime. It is utterly incomprehensible, incomprehensible that the EU has not yet designated Samidun despite the overwhelming evidence. According even to the Council of the European Union, groups or individuals can be added to the EU terror list on the basis of, and I quote, proposals submitted by member states based on a decision by a competent authority of a member state or a third country. In this regard, we already have a standing designation by Israel of Sami as a terror group. We have a decision of the Central Court of Israel which also noted the link between Hezbollah, PFLP, and Mustafa Awad, a, a Samidun operative. And we now also have the decision of the German appellate court finding that Samidun uh, leader Barakat to be a senior PFLP operative. Furthermore, according to the Council of the European Union Common Position Paper 931, which was created in the wake of the 9-11 attacks and forms the legal basis for the EU's criteria for designating uh, groups or individuals as terrorists and the European Court of Justice decision of 2017. A decision of an EU member state uh, court is not even necessary in this regard to designate even just the initiation of an investigation, including carried out by police or national authorities, including outside the EU, can suffice. Given the irrefutable axis of terror 
between Samidu and PFLP and the Iranian regime, the EU has not only the right but the duty, the duty and the obligation to prevent Iran from spreading its deadly tentacles of terror and destruction across the European continent by designating Samidun and senior Samidun leaders to the EU terror list. But don't do this as a favour for Israel. This is first and foremost a concern for the European Union and the citizens of the EU to whom Samidun presents a clear and direct threat and danger. Words, extremism and radicalisation have consequences. Hate unchecked leads to violence. The European Union was founded upon the very values of human dignity, freedom, democracy, respect for the rule of law and equality. These are the values that define the very institution that we are in today. As President of the European Council, Charles Michel said, the battle against terrorism that we are fighting together is a battle to safeguard these fundamental values. Dear friends, this is not a battle in which the EU can afford to stay silent. I thank you for your time.